Today, I will be sharing about the God's name, El Roy, which means the God who sees me. When you are down, our God is El Roy. Our God is a personal God that cares and loves each and every one of us. I hope that this will help you seek God in your times of need and help you be humble in your time of plenty. Good morning, JCS. I hope you guys had a fruitful and successful week. I am very happy to be able to share the Word of God with you guys today. As Ms. Joyce said a few weeks back, this semester we are going with a theme, the name of God in the Bible. Ms. Joyce first shared about God's name, Jehovah Ra, which means the Lord is my shepherd. And a couple weeks ago, Ms. Pauline shared about the God's name, Jehovah Jireh, which is the Lord will provide. Today, I will be sharing about the God's name, El Roy, which means the God who sees me. At this time, I would like to share a story from Genesis 16, 1 through 16. It is the entire chapter that talks about the name El Roy. Now, Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, but she had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So she said to Abram, The Lord has kept me from having children. Go, sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abram agreed to what Sarai said. So after Abram had been living in Canaan 10 years, Sarai, his wife, took her Egyptian slave, Hagar, and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar, and she conceived. When she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. Then Sarai said to Abram, You are responsible for the wrong I am suffering. I put my slave in your arms, and now that she knows she is pregnant, she despises me. May the Lord judge between you and me. Your slave is in your hands, Abram said. Do with her whatever you think best. Then Sarai mistreated Hagar, so she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was the spring that is beside the road to Shur. And he said, Hagar, slave of Sarai, where have you come from? And where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, she answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, Go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous to count. The angel of the Lord also said to her, You are now pregnant and you will give birth to a son. You shall name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard your misery. He will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand against him. And he will live in hostility toward all his brothers. She gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. For she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. That is why the well was called Ber Lahai Roy. It is still there between Kadesh and Bered. So Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram gave the name Ishmael to the son she had borne. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore him Ishmael. Now, I don't know if you guys remember the story that Miss Pauline shared a couple of weeks ago about how Sarai, later known as Sarah, and Abram. God promised Abram that he will make his descendants numerous as the star. But Sarai, his wife, was not able to have a baby, and she was not getting younger. We know later on that God gave um, them Isaac, but the story that I just shared was a time before that, and Sarah was losing patience, waiting for the promised baby. She was thinking humanly, of course, and knowing that her childbearing window was slowly coming to a close, she devised her own plan to continue the family tree in accordance to the custom at that time. As we just read, 
Sarai's plan was to build a family through her slave Hagar. So she gave Hagar to be Abram's wife, and Hagar became pregnant. Now, when Hagar became pregnant, she got a little bit proud and started to despise her own master because she was able to get pregnant while her master couldn't. It is as if someone helped you, like on a test, and when uh, come test day, you got your score back, you ended up getting a better score than the person that helped you. And later on, because you got a better score, you start to think that you're smarter and you're better than the person who helped you and start to look down on them. Now, this did not sit well with Sarah. Remember, Hagar was Sarah's slave and Hagar was despising Sarai, her master. So Sarai went to complain to Abram and he told her to do to Hagar however she saw fit. So Sarai started to mistreat and aggravate Hagar, making her life very miserable. She mistreated Hagar so much that Hagar decided to run away while pregnant. Now, I cannot even imagine how much su um, suffering and mistreatment Hagar must have received from Sarai that she thought her only course of action was to run away and run away into the desert. Now remember, that there wasn't a lot of place to run away at that time. Most of the land was still desert, and so that's where Hagar went, into the desert. Of course, now the desert was no walk in the park, and Hagar was suffering and was in need of help. And in the midst of great hardship and distress, an angel of the Lord appeared to Hagar and comforted her and assured her that she will have a son and that God will make her descendants numerous to count as well. Knowing that God was always watching her and that she was not forgotten gave her comfort and hope. And this is where Hagar was, confess, uh, was able to confess in the desert that he is the one that sees me. He is El Roy. Now let me share a personal story with you. Whenever my mom talks about me, she never seemed to leave out this story of how much I clinged on to her when I was a baby and that I'll never let her go. This made her very tiring, of course, and she said that I had to always be able to see my mom and, and that gave me comfort that I saw my mom watching me and seeing me. Of course, I was embarrassed by the story every time uh, she told it, but that didn't stop her, and especially it didn't stop her telling to my wife multiple times. Now, the story stopped being embarrassing when I saw one of my niece do the same thing. Many years back, my sister-in-law visited my wife to catch up with her um, and to also to seek a little help with her two kids. The second child, about a year old at that time, um, was terrified whenever she could not see her mom. She would not stop crying the moment um, she could not see her, even if the mom was right next door. My sister-in-law, of course, was stressed out about um, this situation, and she could not find a break or a rest from the baby. The baby needed that assurance that the mom is there, that her caregiver is watching and seeing, and that, give, uh, that, uh, that gave this baby great comfort and peace in mind. When you are lost, when you are in the desert, when you are down, our God is El Roy, the God who sees me. It is not the God who sees us or God who sees them. It is God who sees me. Our God is a personal God that cares and loves each and every one of us. I do not want to neglect the fact that when things are good, when you are happy, when everything is going well in life, even in that moment, God is El Roy. It is our human nature that we are sinners. We are easily haughty and prideful and easily lose sight of God when things are going well and seek God when things are going bad. We have to be mindful and remember that God sees me and cares for me no matter the situation. I hope that this will help you seek God in your times of need and help you be humble in your time of plenty. If you think no one sees you, you feel invisible to others, or feel insignificant, you can be assured that God sees you and cares for you. I hope that today you can find comfort and peace 
in the thought that no matter what is going on in your life, good or bad, God is there and that He sees you, cares for you, and loves you. He is El Roy. Let's pray. Thank you, God. You are El Roy, the God that sees me. Let us find comfort in that fact that you are always there caring for us and loving us. When we are alone, when we think nobody sees us, let us remember the name El Roy, that you are always watching over us, loving us, and let us be able to find strength and find peace in the fact that we are never alone, no matter what the situation. We thank you uh, for being our God, and we thank you for always um, being there for us. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.